Hi there, it's Josie. And today I'd like to talk about being scared to canter. I do read the comments on the videos and some of the comments in there have been people saying that they're scared of canter. And I do know that that is a problem for some people. So first of all, please don't be ashamed um, if it's you. It is fine, you are allowed to be frightened of canter, but what we need to do is find a way to get you through that so you can canter. So what I hope to show you today is just an exercise that can help you get yourself ready to canter. So you don't even need to canter to do this. This is actually getting yourself ready so that when you have a canter, that you are set up for success, that you don't fail and that it's not a terrifying experience for you because let's face it, horse riding is meant to be fun. I tell myself that all the time. It is meant to be fun. Yes, if you're going to train a horse or you're going to ride a horse, you are going to stretch the um, boundaries of your comfort without a doubt. But to be absolutely terrified and do something on a horse does you no favours and certainly doesn't do any favours for the poor horse because he will read your body language and how you're feeling um, and then your energy and then he will uh, probably get himself a little bit uptight as well and that helps nobody. So the first thing is to admit to yourself that you're scared to canter and that's okay. The second thing is to realise that what I'm going to teach you today can take one day, can take one week, can take one month, might take a year, it doesn't matter. It's not a race. Don't do something that you are scared of doing. As I said, yes, you have to press, push the boundary. So there's gonna come a point where you realise you're a little bit nervous, but you need to take the next step. But if you're scared, do not do it. That would be like me training a young horse and expecting it to be able to do something when it is fearful. I put all the foundations in place for the young horse to be able to take the next step with some confidence. Doesn't mean they're not tentative, because sometimes they are. Let's talk about running over a tarp. So they are tentative to go over it, but I build them up with all of the success that I can and all the tools they need to then be able to do it. They might go over and go, oh my God, oh, that was awesome. Okay, so you, I want to set you up for canter like that. It's really simple, really easy, but you have to do the work. I can't do it for you. So another prereq so a prerequisite for you to be able to have a good experience cantering is to have a horse that is actually balanced in the canter for you to canter on. It's no good getting on a horse that is running and scrambling and losing his balance. You're not going to have a good time and you're not going to feel very confident. That I can promise you. So if your horse is like that, either find somebody, a friend or someone with a horse that uh, has got a good balanced canter that you can have your can you can do your canter on, or these exercises I'm going to show you can be done on your horse. But whilst you're doing them, pop your horse on the lunge and do some trot canter transitions to help your horse find his balance in canter. Now horses that are unbalanced in canter on the lunge will usually run really fast because they're chasing their own balance, they're trying to find it. So what you try to do then is you do walk, trot, uh, sorry, pardon me, you do trot to canter transitions, lots of them. Half a circle of canter, trot, quarter of a circle of canter, trot because the trot canter transition will help the canter become more balanced. Now let's get on to you. So I'd just like to point out one more thing. This is what I see a lot of people do who are frightened to canter, is they're asking their horse to canter, well they think they are, but what they're doing with their body and their reins, or maybe just not their reins, but their body, is that they're going, but don't, but don't, but don't, because they're frightened. Now that's really unfair for your horse, because he's, he won't be able to work out what you're asking him, it's very confusing. So you need to be pretty um, consistent with what you're going to do. And if you'd like to know what the canter aids are, I have, I'll, I'll link them in a video up here because I've done a video on them. But if you're really nervous, put your horse on the lunge and teach him to canter 
from the word canter. It's not hard to do. Um, and that way, when you're on his back, you can just say canter and he will canter. Much easier for you whilst you're trying to get some confidence in the canter. All right, so there's no excuses here. You can start this from the standstill. So what am I going to teach you? I'm going to teach you to find your balance on the horse so that when he canters, you're already certain that you have your balance and then you have confidence to go into canter. So what you are going to do is you are going to stand in your stirrup irons and find your center so you are balanced. What you will find, you may need to shorten your stirrups a little bit and I'll do mine, hang on. All right, so I've just put my stirrups up too, which is making my knee bang into the knee block here anyway. But you need to be able to stand up in your stirrups and stay balanced on your horse, not hanging on to anything. In the beginning, you may like to just have a little piece of mane there to help you. I did that in the beginning, but you need to be able to find your own balance. And what I would like you to do is to up and lean forward and feel what happens when you lean forward and then lean back and feel what happens when you lean back. Now you will find that your shoulders are in front of your hips because what you're doing is you're making a Z shape. So I've got my shoulders over my knees, my hips over my heels because these joints and my ankle joint are going to be the ones that are going to absorb the movement. All right, so you need to be able to do that at the standstill. Sorry, Rebel, the saddle's slipping here. So you need to be nice and balanced and play with your center of gravity and because that's the best way to find where the center is. So I've got my center here. So once you can do it in the standstill, get your horse walking. Rebel's going to go, what are you doing? And then get up in the walk. And you probably won't feel that you're absorbing much movement here. You can hang on. I want to make sure you're not leaning forward because if you do this in the canter and something happens to horse spooks, you're in the ejector seat position. In fact, never on horses should you be leaning too much forward because it is called the ejector seat because that's what happens. They stop, drop, throw a shoulder and you get ejected out. So you should be able to just find yourself balanced. If you lose your balance a little, sit back down, resettle everything and find it again. Good boy. So once you can do that in walk, you go on and do it in trot. So go off in rise trot. Find your nice rise trot bit and then stand in your irons. What you're gonna find here is you're going to have to be nice and supple through your ankle, your knee and your hip so that it can all concertina down and be the shock absorber. Don't lean forward, don't lean back because you see what happens, sorry, and he does not like it, I'm banging him in the back, sorry mate. So you find the middle piece, hold on to a little piece of mane or pop your finger just on his neck and then take it off and then pop it back on and then take it off and see if you can find your balance and how does that help you in the canter? Well, if you can do that, that's called a two point seat. If you can do that in trot, I promise you, canter is so much easier. Trot's actually particularly on, it's not too bad on Rebel, he's got quite an elastic trot, but on Spider, he's got a shorter, choppier trot and it's actually harder to do. And if you can do it in trot, you can do it in canter. So let's see how that looks. Hang on to a bit of mane if you need to, and once you can do it in trot, ask your horse for canter. And in a two point. Much easier. Good. 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 Good boy. And trot. So what happens when you canter in a two point? I feel a bit 
is you stand up, you get, you feel your balance is there, hang on to a little bit of mane, then you can sit and feel the canter seat, and then you can get up if you start to lose your balance, and then you can get back down and feel the canter seat, and you go, whoops, whoops, I'm losing my balance, get up. I hope that helps. It doesn't matter, remember, if it takes one day, one week, one year. It's all about you feeling confident to go into the canter. I do promise you, if you can two point in trot, you can two point in canter. Just remember not to lean too far forward, not to lean too far back. So take your time finding your balance point there. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.